everyone. I'm Lisa Marie Latino with Mary Kovach from Cleveland and Justin Smith from Washington, D.C. I am in Jersey City, New Jersey. And joining us today is multimedia personality Clarissa Burt. Clarissa, how are hey you there. doing? Hi <laughs> there. Hi. Where are you calling in from? Well, I am in Phoenix, Arizona right now. This is where I live now. I've been here for about 15 years. I lived in Italy for 30. And then before that, I wasn't too far from you, Lisa, in New Jersey, where I graduated high school. I know. I love it. A fellow Jersey Italian girl. Well, I like to say that, um, you know, I'm, I'm, an, I'm, a, I'm Italian, but not by blood. So I'm a thousand percent Irish. Uh, I mean, a thousand. Like, as far back as I can go, it's all Irish. And so when I went to Italy in 1982 for the first time, um, I then learned the language and I loved it so much I stayed and learned more language. And then uh, eventually I became an Italian citizen. So I'm very, very tied to the Italian community, and I'd like to think that they are to me too. Uh, after the years of uh, television, I lived, uh, I must have been, I think about a good 20 years on television uh, in Italy. So it, they were great. It was a great, great run. And, uh, and I'm still very much in contact with the community either here, especially in Los Angeles when I went out, because I'm you know, much closer to LA here, and, um, and especially when I go back to Italy. Well, you have the Italian accent perfected because when we were just doing a little pre-interview before coming live, you were telling us all these amazing stories that we're going to dig into today right. about working in Italy and the cool people that you met. And you said their names with the Italian accent. Perfect. <laughs> well, when you learn it Italian, you learn it in Italian, you know? <laughs> uh, and so uh, it's funny because, you know, when I, when I, you know, how, how an Italian, when, when you're in conversation, they'll go, eh? Well, eh, for me, is it's, it's, it's just part of who I am and how I speak. And when I, when I do that around my, you know, my uh, uh, Irish family, they're what, what do you mean, eh? What's eh? You know, like, <laughs> what, what's an eh? And so, but for me, it was, it's very natural. So, uh, yeah. <laughs> I know Mary has many stories about, um, you know, you working in Italy. So, Mary, take it away. Sure. Well, the first question I have, um, as Italians, we love our namesake, and you have a great story about the name Clarissa. Can you tell us a little bit about it? Yeah. Yeah, I can. Um, Clarissa, I'm the fifth born. I'm the fifth generation uh, Clarissa. It went to the first born girl of every generation, and it started with Clarissa Whitehead, who uh, came from Germany. And so it came down through, you know, as I said, the generations and it ended with me because I didn't have children. But when I lived in Italy, I was uh, and it was some occasion, I can't remember, recall which one, but I, I was, uh, I, 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 it was the anagrafe, which is the, the um, census bureau. And so I had a census bureau worker come up to me and say, you know, Clarissa, I don't know if you know this or not, but we have had an onslaught of baby girls that have been called, that have been named Clarissa. You know, much to my surprise and certainly to my joy. And my grandmother, <laughs> Clarissa, was over the moon about this fact. She just thought that was the greatest darn thing on the planet. So all those little Clarissas running around in Italy, I'd like to think I had something to do with that. That's fantastic. Yeah. So um, another question we had, yeah, um, the Sons of Italy Foundation has partnered with the Andrea Bocelli Foundation mm -hmm. and huge fans of him for years. I understand you've met him. Yeah, I have met him. And the first time I met Andrea was, I, I'm going to say, it's got to be 30 years ago. And I uh, very frequently, you know, I, I worked in television there and I emceed. And so I would go and emcee a lot of the events around Italy, especially on the weekends, Friday nights, Saturday nights, sometimes a Sunday, but rarely. And I was at an event uh, it was in a theater. I remember being in the north of Italy, but I couldn't say exactly which. I don't have that kind of memory. And, uh, and that the organizers had said to me, you know, you're going to be uh, introducing a young gentleman. He is non vedente, which means he cannot see. And, um, and would you mind when you, after you, in, you, know, you introduce him, would you mind going out into the wings and bringing him in front of the microphone? And so absolutely not. I'd be my pleasure. And it was Andrea Bocelli. Before Andrea Bocelli was... And Andrea Bocelli, he was another <laughs> singer that I was introducing, you know, and, and the many events that I had, that I had uh, worked as a presenter or as an MC. And so, 
It was him. And then I got, as I said, about four or five, back, I think it's more like five years ago, we were in an event together in Los Angeles and I went up to say hello. And it was just nice to see him again and to reminisce about, you know, the old times and, and uh, just to see his, his meteoric success globally was, was, it was really fun to watch. As an Italian Irish girl, was it intimidating for you to travel around Italy I'm seeing these events? No. Oh no. I, you know, I, I was on Survivor. I don't know if you know just how. You know, girl, I'm going to tell you, know, I, uh, and, and I don't like to leave with this, but you know, and it just kind of gives you the sense of what the formation was. You know, I'm an Irish Catholic girl from New Jersey. It's pretty, you know, it, the, the, the bark is pretty tough. You know what I mean? <laughs> so I went to, um, I went to, I, I had, well, I'm going to say I won Survivor. I'm just going to say that I did win Survivor back in, in it was an Italian Survivor. We were on Nic the island of Nicaragua or the country of Nicaragua, off an island of the country of Nicaragua. And um, I was on Survivor. So it, that, there, it takes a lot to scare me to answer your question. Um, it takes a lot to scare me, but Italy, how could you be afraid of anything in Italy? I mean, there's, you know, they are, first of all, again, the most beautiful language on the planet. And secondly, the most beautiful people in the world. I mean, they are the most loving, uh, accepting, open-armed populace that I've ever encountered. And I've traveled quite a bit. So I, I, I should probably preface, I should have prefaced this by saying I first started in France. Oh, yeah. wow. That's okay. where I went first. But that only lasted a year until I was able to get over to Italy. And then I never left. And I never went back to France either. <laughs> <laughs> food is better anyway. Now. <laughs> yeah. You know, speaking of food, because we're looking at the Facebook comments right now, Justin, I'm just going to leapfrog over you. Bob Bianchi. Hello, Bob. He asks, when you were learning the language, because this is a big Italian debate, right? Right. You what? Sauce or gravy? <laughs> Say that again. Do I, what? Are you taught sauce or gravy? Oh, hell, it's not gravy. It's never been gravy. <laughs> gravy is a whole different Boy, thing. Here you go. Gravy, comes, yeah, gravy <laughs> comes from meat drippings. Sauce comes from the tomato. Let's get that straight, everyone. Thank you very much. <laughs> so that is the proper way. We heard yes. it here first. Absolutely. <laughs> End of the yeah. day. You never hear gravy. Now, no, it's completely different. And salsa is is a, a, a la salsa. It's 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 sauce. It's red and it's tomato. And gravy is what you take from the meat drippings and you put <laughs> cornstarch in to thicken it up. Have I cleared up the problem now once and for all? Yeah, absolutely. The comments, Justin, are going to explode now. <laughs> I post this up for debate. I mean I that's may have to crazy. take comments off. I don't know if that's we can handle so it. That's funny. <laughs> oh, that's a riot. Okay. Well, this is a good segue because in reading about all the wonderful things that you do, you have a series of gluten-free Italian do. cookbooks. Yeah. I, I have, have yeah. The one, yeah. The, the one behind me over here somewhere, over here, you can't yeah. see it, is the Italian one. But the one that's American is this one. So, you know, I, I couldn't understand, this is the Italian gluten-free gastronomy cookbook I did with Rita Romano, and she lives here in Phoenix as well, an Italian from Bari. And we did the book because uh, she is a, a, an internationally renowned chef, and I was uh, notoriously in the hospital for reasons nobody could figure out. And it was gluten, so pizza and pasta and pane were an issue for me that I didn't know about. And wow. so, uh, and so there were quite a few trips to the hospital uh, in, when I was in Italy. And then when I came back here, it continued and I couldn't figure out what the issue was. We figured out it was gluten. And from that day on, she and I partnered on the book last year. It's when it came out and it can be found on Amazon it, and uh, is it, a digital copy. And then at clarissabert.com as a hard copy. So thanks for asking. Well, no, yeah. because I, in being in quarantine right now, my husband and I were really trying to be grain free and coming yeah, up with different ways. Eat, uh, and every, every, uh, yeah, that's a tomato. And that's where the sauce comes from. <laughs> <laughs> but every, every recipe, it's a beautiful book. It's a coffee table book. And every, you know, every recipe has its beautiful pictures. All the pictures were done by Rita. She did an amazing job. And I just showed up and, you know, 
took the picture, but no, um, which I, it's not true. I, ha I was very hands on with the, with the creative process and, uh, you know, the fonts and the colors and the formatting and that sort of thing. And then the issue of gluten, because there are a lot of people in Italy that do have gluten intolerances or they are, you know, celiac. And so this is, this is, look, eating gluten is gluten free is not just for people that have a, an intolerance. It's good for everyone. So yeah. It's fun. I had a great time. Recipe? Pardon me? You have a favorite recipe? You know, I, I'm not, I was never a big pasta eater anyway. And I'm not, a, I love bread, but I don't eat it because of the carb factor and all that sort of thing. I go more toward like the tiramisu, right? Uh, I think uh, very, <laughs> you know, you know what I'm saying. The tiramisu is kind of like, you know, bring me to sweet, take me away from, I love sweets. So <laughs> yeah. that's my big downfall. That's awesome. Justin, do we have any other questions from the audience? Yeah, we have another question from Bob Bianchi. He would like to know how how is the media um, how is the media going to change because of the pandemic? Is it going to affect the the acting? Is it going to affect the producing? Yeah. Um, if we can get your thoughts on that. Yeah. Well, first off, I think we've seen is that I think that everything is going to change in general, especially with offices, real estate. Uh, it's going to be a, a, a problem because a lot of companies, uh, not only in media, but many others have realized that they can do business as usual just as well, if not better, uh, by not being altogether in an office and having the overhead. So that's something that I think is, you know, it's going to work itself out in the wash as we see in the next six to eight months, maybe a year, how many people are going to be working more from home. Now, with that having been said, I know that there are a lot of people that really like leaving the house and really like going to the office. So I, Maybe, I don't know, but maybe there's going to be a little bit more of a 50-50 going on there. I think a lot of companies, though, now are going to have to lower their overhead. And that would mean, you know, cutting back on, on the office, uh, the four walls and the office. As far as media is concerned, we've seen how everything has moved from, you know, from traditional media online. I mean, everybody now uh, is doing their shows from home. J journalists are working from home. Uh, and it's, it does, you know, it's again, it's that catch 22. It's, it's, it's great to be at home. I've always worked from home, but when you're at home and you're with, you know, your significant other, if you're with children and that sort of thing, it's, it's, it can be a little distracting when you're trying to actually get some work done. I think it's all going to play out in the wash. And then, as I said before, uh, especially with magazines and tactile media, where you're actually touching a magazine or pamphlets or menus and that sort of thing, Again, I was on a call this morning at 6 a.m. because it was in Europe. This, this, uh, it was the FIPP, F I P P, um, conference call coming in that, and they're all about um, magazines. Um, it was uh, all about how they are going to now really come away from you know the digi the uh, the hard copy piece uh, of of anything and start to go online because this is another apparently another source of uh, a viral uh, you know possibility. Uh, or picking up germs uh, that we never thought of before. So that those are two ways that I think that, you know, this will probably see uh, in the near future, but what we've seen happening going online, I mean, uh, you know, the internet has, has crashed a couple different times, especially Zoom uh, has had some issues I know of because, uh, because everybody's online now. So, I mean, when did we ever fathom truly having a funeral or watching a funeral online? I don't think that anybody ever really thought we would go down that path or weddings or in this point part, uh, it might even be now a lot of the kids are with their, uh, with their graduation ceremonies. Uh, you know, I'm not going to go as far as to say a prom online, but I, it, it could look like that. So if things are changing, they're changing dr drastically and dramatically. And, uh, you know, on the other hand, uh, look at what's happened with nature, look at what's happened with, you know, animals. Uh, in, in this whole, in this whole uh, crisis. So I don't know what the plan is because I have great contacts at the Vatican, but I don't have the correct, you know, the hotline to God. So I, or the, you know, cause I don't know what's really going to happen, but um, it's, it's been very interesting to sit back and watch for sure. How has this all affected your business in the limelight? Well, in the limelight, not very much at all, because I, I was already doing this, as you, you can see, I, this is my studio. So I have already been doing this. I've been working online for years. Uh, Zoom is not new to me. Uh, it's, you know, brand new to a lot of people. And, uh, and so for me, it hasn't really affected. I just continue to either, uh, you know, record my, my uh, uh, interviews or some 
sometimes if it's a P, more of a PSA in nature, a public service announcement, I'll put it out live. One of those is, you know, domestic violence. So those are messages we want to get out now because a lot of, of victims are at home with their, their abusers. And so the cases are escalating. So I try to get PSAs out about that or about how to find jobs, you know. So it depends on what the subject matter is, whether I'm recording or going live. But uh, the podcasts are still going out, you know, all the same. The magazine is still, you know, we're working on now this, uh, the uh, fifth edition now, and that'll come out on June 1st, which is such a lot of work. It's just crazy amount of work. It's a crazy amount of work. But I love what I do. I've been in media for a very long time. So this is, this is nothing new to me. Um, it's new to a lot of other people, but hey, come on, gang, you know, <laughs> come on over to the right side because but we're having fun. We're, we are having a good time and making the, not fun, we're having a, a, a good time and making the best of, of, of a very bad situation. Let's put it that way. Absolutely. Now, In the Limelight aims to help women entrepreneurs. Why, it was, is, that it so is. Why was that so important for you to take on? Well, you know, first of all, because I am an entrepreneur in some way, shape or form, I've always been an entrepreneur. Um, I don't know what corporate is. I've never really worked in an office. So, you know, from the modeling days, it was studios and each day you'd be with a different photographer, a different makeup person, a different hair people, a different clients. So I was, I was always used to moving around and having, a, see how I get Italian about all, did you notice the Italian in me? <laughs> see all that happening? So, um, you know, I was always used to being with a lot of different people. Um, and so, uh, again, being an entrepreneur means, um, you know, you know, counting on yourself, working with yourself or very few other, you know, usually with few other people. I call myself a solopreneur, uh, because it is me, me and myself and I, it's all three of us. And, uh, and then there are, you know, entrepreneurs may have a small or a medium sized business. Um, and so for me, uh, I've always resonated really well with, 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 my girls. I just love my ladies. I love helping, you know, women. And, uh, and so I think that that's kind of where uh, in the limelight is all about guys too, but we do see a tendency more for women and, uh, and it, we do highlight and showcase their businesses, their products. And, um, and that's kind of how that all played out. I just, I'm in media and I wanted to bring light to, it's a, it's a lifestyle public uh, way of, of approaching entrepreneurialism. It's not, I don't want to be Inc. Magazine. I don't want to be, you know, Entrepreneur Magazine. This is in the limelight and we do it a different way. I love that. Mary, do you have any questions that you want to follow up with? Sure. So we have uh, just under 35,000 members nationally and more than half of them are female. And I know we're gonna get this question. Do you have any beauty tips for us? You were a model for some time in Italy and we know you've got something. Got something up my sleeve. Yep. Um, let me see, wait a second. <laughs> um, <laughs> um, I'll tell you what, what's really exciting me lately is getting the toxicity out of cosmetics. And it's something that in Europe with the EU and the regulations there on, around cosmetics, uh, it's a Bible that's this thick and it's the yeses and the noes that you can put or cannot put into cosmetics. And they are much more, uh, they're much farther ahead than we are here in the United States. Here in the United States, as I know it, there's one page document that was created in 1934. Uh, and that's basically it. There are some not lobbies around cosmetics that um, really are not getting the kind of traction that they need moving forward. But we really be, need to be very careful about what we're putting in our bodies and on our bodies as far as cosmetics and, and, and um, beauty products. So and I, when I say cosmetics, you color cosmetics or creams and lotions mm -hmm. and shampoos and conditioners and the like. So they're all cut. I could be here all day on this subject, but you know, the idea of being able to go into the kitchen and make some things myself is really fun. It's really exciting. So I make my own uh, lip balms now because I know that mm -hmm. they're, they're made with pure waxes and that they're no, they're not petroleum based in any way. Um, or I will make, I really am against buying plastic. So I really try to save my plastic containers and use them to make my own things here at the house, i.e. Um, dishwasher soap, laundry detergent. Uh, I make my own um, dryer sheets. I could be here all day on this stuff. The books are not in this office. They're in the next room. But I've got a library of books that's all about beauty, beauty and, um, and cosmetics and how to make your own cosmetics at home. And it's so easy. It's so inexpensive. And it is so much more healthy 
uh, if you just do it from home. Um, and it's so much fun. It's just so much fun. Now, I don't make the sauces or the gravy because I live alone, so I don't make any of it. Yep. So I don't do a lot of cooking around here, but get me a, I get very excited about cosmetics. And, um, you know, I'm, I'm good about eight hours sleep. I got to have the eight hours, no more, no less, but get those eight hours. I do drink a lot of water, especially because I live in the desert, so I need to hydrate a little more probably than most because we it's hot out here in Phoenix. Uh, and, uh, and uh, you know, just I, I don't use anything particularly like, I mean, olive oil is great for a whole bunch of stuff, you guys. It really is. You throw it in your hair, it's really, really good. And it can be incorporated into a lot of the talk, uh, t um, the uh, cosmetics that I was talking about before. So, you know, just go online. There are all kinds of blogs. Pinterest is great so, uh, resource. Uh, books, there are all kinds of books about making your own products. I'm so sorry I tried to turn that off. <laughs> um, it's but, live. It's yeah. so oh, sorry. It was my, uh, right? oh, there it is. Sorry, girls. Okay. So you get the point though. I mean, just being able to get in the kitchen and making your own things now that you can, it's just kind of a fun thing to do knowing you're going to be saving money and that it's not as toxic. Um, and especially when we're talking about deodorants and I'm not going to say there's a direct correlation to deodorant and breast cancer, but I'm going to say it's probably not a bad idea if you make your own de deodorant. I agree. I, I sense your next book. You probably do. Yeah, I sense <laughs> a book. I sense a new television series, YouTube series, something. You, know, you should say that because right now I'm working, collaborating with a new, a new television uh, 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 platform. It's a new television platform, much like Netflix or Hulu, but it, there's no movies. It's all television. And I'm working on bringing on the Italian channel. So you Ooh. guys stay tuned. Absolutely. Not, I'm working on the beauty channel. So that was to... <laughs> to do, you know, hold it. but I'm working on the beauty channel and then uh, I already told them that I want to do the Italian channel so we'll be in touch everybody yes oh, we have to have you back when that launches that I sounds will. very exciting I will Justin any other questions from our audience we have one final question from Vince DiGregorio um, oh, I was looking forward to Bob again darn it <laughs> <laughs> we can get as many Bob questions as we want don't worry um <laughs> Vince asks if you're familiar with another American born actress that has gained some fame in Italy. Her name is Jessica Polsky. No, not familiar. No. You have to remember too that I, I left Italy 15 years ago. Uh, I've been living here in the United States since, States since then. I do go back and forth, but when I'm there, I really don't stop to watch a lot of television. You know, I'm busy, I'm working, I'm meeting people, I'm greeting people, I'm hugging people I haven't seen in a long time. And so um, I'm, I'm usually pretty busy when I'm there, but, um, uh, but I love it. It's, it's absolutely, it, it is, it is, a huge, you know, I spent 30 years in Italy. That's half of my life. So if you think that, you know, for 30 years, this Irish Catholic little girl from Philadelphia, Pennsylvania, you know, really grew up in so many different ways there. Um, I, you know, I learned a whole language there. I learned different dialects there. I learned what food really was all about and what love and sharing was all about and what um, open arms meant and, you know, um, um, just the warmth of the Italian people for me is something that, I mean, they accepted me as one of their own years ago, you know, a long, long time ago. Uh, when 9-11 happened, I had an outpouring of love from Italy like nobody's ever seen. I, I, I was flabbergasted because, you know, Italy does remember you know, American, the Americans uh, from, you know, that came over and, and, and saved, you know, actually it's funny because my birthday is the, their day of liberation um, from, from the, you know, a, uh, April 25th when the, uh, oh, happy um, birthday. Uh, thank you. Yeah. Yeah. When the, uh, when the, um, uh, the American soldiers, uh, you know, marched through and liberated Rome and all, I mean, the stories I heard were amazing. And I had a couple of people come up to me and say, you know, the American, I remember this one, uh, American soldier and his name was Robert and I must've been two or three years old, but he used to, we didn't have any food. We had nothing to eat, but he used to give us chocolate. <laughs> Now this is chocolate being sent from the United States. Somehow these guys are getting chocolate from the home and they're giving it to the Italian children. I mean, it was just, there were so many, I used to have a whole memorial here. Hold on, just don't go anywhere. I don't have the memorial as much anymore, but oh. <laughs> but this is how Italian I am, you guys. Like, this is how Italian I am. <laughs> 
just so you know, I still have, you know, all the American, I had so many American flags given to me during 9-11. Here's some more. I mean, it just goes on and on. Look, I'm here. I promise. I'm still in here somewhere. And then, <laughs> uh, and then you know, Italian flags were given to me as well. So Italy is a huge, huge part of me and who I am and certainly of my heart. And uh, it's something I'll never forget. The amount of love and outpouring that the Italians gave to me, but have given to many is something extraordinary. The way they're even handling, you know, what's going on with the COVID crisis right now is it's, it's quite, they are quite an extraordinary popolo. I, no, I, I totally agree. Everything seems better in Italy. The food, Everything the air, better. the people, the culture, it's, it's really a beautiful way of life. It, living in Italy, did you have a favorite city, town, spot that you like to visit? Wow, they're all, you know, they're all different. I, you know, obviously, I, I think one of the first thing, when I was a model and I went from Milan for the first time down to Rome and I saw all the different palazzi that were all different, you know, kind of colors, all these lovely colors, I knew that that was where I was going to live. When I first saw Venice, I thought I had gone to heaven and died. I thought that was the coolest darn thing on the planet. Um, you know, and then there's, there are other things like you go down to, you know, you get down to Naples and, uh, just the, they're a whole, you know, it, it, Naples is just a whole different planet. You know, it's just like a whole, and, and the, the amount of, even there, the amount of love and, and affection and attention that you get, it's amazing. And then going to Pompeii, for example, and, and, and seeing, you know, some re really amazing, you know, uh, um, uh, the Scabi, how do you say Scabi, Justin? is the ruins ruins thank you uh, the ruins from you know the people that you know from the vesuvius uh, exploding i mean it's so full of history i mean italy and and you know about rome they say you know uh, roma roma è la mamma è una mamma rome is a mother she's a mother to you you know and it's so true that every time you go back it's like going home so i i can't I, i'll never be able to say enough about Italy. I mean, it's, it was, again, 30 years of my life, and it's something that I'm still very, very close to. Absolutely. Mary, I know you have questions about Clarissa's connection to Sons of Italy. Yes, yeah, so I understand we, uh, we actually launched our first lo uh, local lodge in Rome earlier this year, and you were part of the ceremony? Yes, I was there. It was, and I have my, oh God, hold on one second. <laughs> I think this is it. Is this it? Yeah, Capitolo di Roma. Here it is, everybody. Oh, love yep. that. That's yep. Fantastic. Yep. Yep. So that is it. And there were three gentlemen in the room. And I have to, I really do have to thank Carmelo Cutoli. He was the one that brought me in and said, hey, listen, we're starting up this new chapter in Rome. And we would love it if he would be one of our charter uh, members. I do have an honorary membership now, which is very exciting. And it was given to me on the 8th. See, I told you I was in Italy in February. On the 18th of February. <laughs> the 18th, just the and, uh, <clears throat> and it was given to me and I have it here in my office and I'm very, very proud of it. Um, just as I was uh, proud to become an Italian citizen. The day they told me I had become an Italian citizen, I cried my eyes out. Oh my gosh. Oh. I mean, it was just waterworks all over the place. So I, you know, I, I, I get very, I get, you know, I'm very, I, I get real tied to stuff like that. You know, I do, I get, I'm very patriotic and I get, you know, the, the flag means something to me, whether it be my flag or the Italian flag. And I get very patriotic and, and very grounded in things that I think have, that are of value, of, of valore, no? And, um, and certainly the Osdia is that for me. So I was very honored, really proud of that. And uh, I'd like to do more. We'll see how, what we can do moving forward. Absolutely. That's fantastic. That, Mary, anything else that you'd like to add? Um, well, one, we definitely want to thank you for joining us today. Um, earlier, you had mentioned you, uh, you gave tours in yes. different parts of Italy as an entrepreneur. Yes. Our members would probably be interested in that. Do you want to talk a little yeah. bit about yeah, that? I take, I take entrepreneurs. I take about 20 people, no more. Uh, and it's an application process. So I, you know, I, I like to know who's coming along and, and, um, and how they can best benefit by, you know, the, the kind of tour that I give. I, <clears throat> we go for about a week and I take them to, to meet some of my good friends. And that's uh, Mr. Lamborghini, Mr. Pagani, who's another supercar maker. We go and we meet Mr. Ferragamo. We go to his, uh, his Borgo, which is now a five-star uh, hotel, which is absolutely gorgeous in Tuscany. 
we go to Bulgari on the top floor, then we had a VIP uh, experience there. I take them behind the scenes of the Vatican to places that nobody gets to see. Nobody gets to see. Um, I myself am slated on September 19th to have a private audience with the Pope. Um, in the occasion of Ennio Morricone uh, giving his very last concert. Ennio Morricone is the very, very famous composer. Um, you, you definitely know his work if you don't know his name. And so I believe he's in his late 80s, if not uh, 90 or so, and he'll be giving his last concert. So these are the kinds of things that I, I, and then I take people, I take them into the regular trattoria, and then we go and we eat, you know, five stars. So there's a, we really get a whole, and then I certainly take them to the mall, you know, the mall in Tuscany, <laughs> we have fun there. And so I, I think it's a really great uh, trip for those who want to get close to global brands, uh, go knees to knees with these guys, no more than 20 people in the room. I mean, when would that ever happen again, right? You know, just ask them any questions you want. They're the, some of the nicest and most cordial people on the planet. And, uh, and, and I just love, I just love doing that. I love being able to take people to, you know, kind of like to hang out with my peeps. <laughs> and so we just have fun doing that. It's, it's awesome. It's a lot of fun. Well, and, nice. and I usually go every October, just to finish up, I usually go yeah. every October, but I don't know if it'll happen for this year, obviously. So we'll probably will not be doing it this year. <clears throat> might, might be able to do it the early part of next year. Let's say April, 2020, if, if, you know, all is good and all is a go and everybody's free to roam and travel again, then I'll, I'll postpone it about six months. Yeah. Where can people find out more about you, Clarissa? Uh, just ask me, I'll tell you. <laughs> <laughs> Um, clarissabert.com is the website. And then, you know, basically everywhere on social, it's Clarissa Burt. On Facebook, it's Clarissa Burt Official. LinkedIn, Clarissa Burt. Twitter, Clarissa Burt. I don't do Snapchat. I do Instagram at Clarissa Burt. This was so much fun. Justin, Mary, are we wrapped? Do you have anything else? I think we're good. Um, let's see. If... Anyone would like to follow the Order Sons and Daughters of Italy in America, we have a number of uh, social media platforms where you can, you can follow us and to become a member, you can join us at osia.org, O-S-I-A.org. Love it. Everybody join. Something to do, right? Well, yes. Bye, Bob. <laughs> bye, Bob. Uh, bye, bye, Bob. Bye. <laughs> Yes, bye, Bob Bianchi. Thank you, Mark. Oh. Didn't still thank you, Mark. Yes, yeah, this is so much fun. Justin, can we tease who we're coming up with next week? Um, I think we can. Oh, drum roll, please, because this is huge. So uh, tune in next week for Jada Valenti. For Jada Valenti. Unbelievable. All right. Well, we'll see you next week for OS everyone. Five. And um, Clarissa, thank you again so, so thank much. Thank you for having me, guys. Thank, thank you, really thank you guys. Bye-bye now. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye. Bye.